Hey base family, today we're going to check out some budget bases in the sub $500 range. So what do I look for in a $500 base? I'm looking at fit and finish. You know, are there any major dilemmas like uh, big gaps in the neck joint or sharp fret ends? I'm also looking for tuner quality and tuning stability. There's nothing more frustrating than an instrument that is constantly going out of tune. Setup out of the box is also important. You can adjust this on your own, but it helps to know the instrument is playing great from day one. Instruments in this price range have come a long way in the last five or six years. I'm also paying attention to ergonomics. Is the instrument comfortable to play? And last but not least, tone. So basically, a well set up instrument without any major functional flaws and with great tone. With that said, let's take a look at some basses. At $499, we have the Sterling Stingray 4. Music Man basses have always been consistently good with their construction quality and setup. I'm happy to see this extending to the Sterling line. You've got a maple neck and fingerboard with the SLO special shape, which is a narrower one and a half inch nut, attached with six bolts. The body's made of mahogany with a beautiful butterscotch finish. The pickup is a ceramic humbucker like the older Music Man's, and it's got a two-band active EQ. I love this bass. Stingrays have such a classic sound, right? The first mass-produced active bass, it's amazing that you can get that sound for $500 now. There's so many great sounds that have come out of a Stingray bass, whether it is Flea's work with the Red Hot Chili Peppers, or, you know, Another One Bites the Dust with Queen. For those of you who just watched Bohemian Rhapsody, I'll leave a review of that for another time. Um, you know, not to mention the great work of uh, Chic. It's just a fantastic bass, and it's amazing that you can get it at this price point. And I gotta say, these Sterling basses really deliver. Okay, next up. Honestly, I had not given Schechter that close of a look before but I'll be paying more attention to them now. The Schecter Omen Extreme 4 has a $459 street price. It has a 34 inch scale with a maple neck and a rosewood fingerboard. Look at the quality of this rosewood. It has 24 jumbo frets and check out the vector inlays. The body is made of mahogany with a bound and carved flame maple top. This Schecter had the lowest setup of all the bases out of the box. This made the base extremely easy to play, though it does require a light touch. I'd buy this base for the playability and the beautiful finish. Coming in at $399 is the Epiphone Thunderbird 4. This bass feels old school, but not at all traditional. Admittedly, the setup was higher than I would have liked, but the fit and finish looked good, and I saw nothing that would prevent it from getting into the right setup range for my taste. I also really dig the grain of the rosewood on this particular bass, despite it being a lighter color. This bass has the four bolt neck, rather than the set neck seen on the Gibson and higher priced Epiphone versions. The body's made of mahogany, has two Sopar pickups, two volume controls, and a tone control. And man, is that headstock long. Buy this bass if you're looking to rock out. If you can swing it, save up for the set neck version with the Gibson pickups. Like the Thunderbird, and yet in a completely different way, the Gretsch G2220 Junior Jet Bass 2 just oozes character. It comes in at the low end of our price spectrum at $299. It has a 30 inch scale maple neck with a walnut fingerboard and a mahogany body with two mini humbuckers. Controls are volume and tone with a three-way pickup selector. I'm a big fan of the walnut fingerboard on this bass, especially given the rapidly deteriorating quality of sustainable rosewood. Buy this bass if you're looking for something different, something you know small and zippy to change things up, or if you're buying for someone who's smaller in stature. The Yamaha BB434 is part of the revamped broad bass series. Street price is right at the top end of our budget, at $499. It's got a 34 inch scale maple neck with a rosewood fingerboard and a graph tech nut. The neck is attached with six bolts, the last two of which are drilled in at an angle to pull the neck into the body of the base. Keep in mind this feature is not present on the lower priced BB234. The body's made of alder and it has Yamaha Series 5 PJ pickups with Alnico magnets. The controls are two volume and a tone and the bridge can be strung either through the bridge or through the body. The one I demoed was Tobacco Sunburst, but I would also check out the teal blue finish. It's beautiful. Buy this bass for the tone and the versatility of the PJ configuration and for Yamaha's consistency. This is actually the bass I'd buy. In fact, I'm sorely tempted to take this one home, even though I already have another Yamaha BB bass. It has the best balance of playability and tonal flexibility, the body and neck of the new broad bases also feel a bit smaller than my BB1025X. Well, there you have it. Five great bases under $500 that are not the usual suspects. Look, 
I love the Squire Classic 5 P bass, and I was raised on an Ibanez sound gear. It's cool to check out something new. What basses do you think I should check out in this price range for a more detailed review? Are you looking for a comparison between two? Let me know in the comments below and subscribe for more videos.